There are many ways that um, students should be able to um, talk uh, together, student to student, and also students to the instructors. Um, the inst and using the communication tools that are out there and available help to kind of encourage a safe way to share, you know, what it is that you're learning, how you're understanding it, and, um, you know, just being able to address different ways that people understand things, show things visually through, um, you know, audio and other methods. Um, you know, so I think uh, being able to kind of tell stories with different forms of media is very important. And if you have um, content that is just, um, you know, just straight text, you can often, um, you know, not have as much interest uh, as you would if you create something that shows feeling and, um, you know, uh, can be remembered more easily if you have associated visuals. I think it's important to offer students a variety of different resources and ways to deliver content um, because students can sometimes feel like they're stuck in a pattern or they can feel a bit disengaged if they feel that um, it's, it's a bit static. So I do think where appropriate, it's important to offer, um, to have, to, I guess, use technology in different ways to deliver content. So that could be a variety of things, whether that's um, the instructor creating, you know, content that could be video, voiceovers, different things like that, sending students to different links or articles or pre-existing uh, videos, or uh, using other software, maybe it's third-party software. Um, I think it's important to, to you to mix it up to allow students to help students to feel engaged um, throughout the semester. As an instructional designer, I mostly help faculty to develop, to design their own courses. I have taught as an adjunct um, in a number of ways also, but um, some of the faculty professional development training that um, I'm involved with creating, we have um, you know outlines of text supported through um, also video, sometimes there are interviews with somebody. What we usually do is um, to make sure that the technology we're going to use is is appropriate appropriate for the content is a lot of times we'll ask the instructor what is you know what is your goal what are the learning objectives what are we what are we trying to do here and then what technology is available to us a lot of times that's the angle that we take and um, we've seen a lot of success in that uh, we've also discovered a lot of interesting ways to use the technology that's available to us um, so i would say specifically for us that's that's typically what we do. We start with the objectives and then we try to figure out from there uh, what's the best technology to use based on the goals that we have. The collaborative aspect of third-party tools is something that um, is you know really critical so in today's work environment you're not very rarely are you um, you know, given the, that you're asked to work in isolation. You're often working together with other people and you have to communicate and come together with ideas. And so some of the um, communication tools that are out there, even the collaborative tools, even something as simple as a Google document where you can have two people not in the same room at the same time on one side of the world and the other side of the world, but they can be sharing um, you know, a single document and co-creating that document, putting comments in, um, using tools like Skype or, you know, just, um, you know, any kind of web conferencing tool to connect to experts in the field to have authentic learning opportunities, um, you know, so that I'm, you know, I have an opportunity to speak to the people that are really doing what I hope to do in the future. As far as pitfalls, I would say that what can happen sometimes is either if you are forcing a certain technology, maybe it's something the instructor is used to, something they're familiar with, or they just they like it. Um, but it's not it doesn't it's not truly a good fit for what they're they're trying to accomplish. That could be a pitfall. Um, the other thing sometimes is to have too many things going on at once, too many different technologies. Uh, sometimes students feel like I just 
got acclimated to this thing and now I have to do something else and I don't understand why. So I would say if you are going to be using different technologies or you're going to be jumping around from one thing to the next, make sure that you give the students enough time to get acclimated to those technologies and also make sure that they understand why uh, they're using them. Another potential pitfall um, when bringing in other outside resources into a course is you just want to make sure that these are accessible in many different ways to the student. Uh, sometimes things aren't necessarily available and free. So that's something you want to make sure that students aren't going to have to kind of get over a barrier in order to access that, that content. Probably one of the large pitfalls that a faculty might run into is that um, it's hard for them to understand what tools might help them create their messages or communicate in different ways. And because there are a million and a couple million tools that are available, um, you know, it's hard for them to narrow down on which tool is going to help them meet their needs. So that's where, um, you know, talking to instructional designers and even talking to fellow faculty to find out, um, you know, are there some third party tools that are available? that they might use to create a video or is there an online um, graphic editing tool that will help them just crop down an image so that they can focus on what's important, put an arrow pointing to the um, parts that need to be highlighted. And um, you know, I think in today's age of third party tools that they're, you know, one is here this morning, it's gone in the afternoon. Um, it's important to be able to learn how to find your own solutions and learn how to learn. So that's something that um, you know is highly encouraged to be able to um, you know look critically at the tools that are out there and try to figure out what it is. Well, first, figure out what your learning objective is, and then try to figure out what kind of um, solution is out there to help you meet those objectives that you're trying to achieve.